Hey guys, Neely here. I am working on some cooking today, so I thought I would do a what's cooking video. It is right at the end of the month here, and I actually have a whole lot of stuff as far as groceries go that need to be used up before I do my big grocery shop shopping trip for next month. So I'm going to be working on doing some freezer cooking just with things I have here on hand so that I can get them all used up. I got a lot of good deals last month on meat, like the big pork loins that I got. So I have a ton of that left. I still have lots of chicken left. There were several meals that I planned on my meal plan, but we never got to just because um, the holidays and extra treats from the holidays. So people weren't as hungry for bigger meals. So I didn't cook as much as I had planned last month. So I still have a lot of stuff that can be used for January. Last month, I got a really great deal on potatoes. I shared it in one of my grocery hauls, stored them as I searched, researched online how to do it. And all of my Yukon gold potatoes are still perfect and storing really well. But my two boxes of russet potatoes have started to sprout. They're still good. They just have started to sprout a little bit. They're still, they're still hard. Um, but I did want to try to use them up real fast. So I am going to do a couple of instant pot freezer soups. I'm going to get stuff prepped and get it frozen so that when it's time to cook, I can just throw it right into the instant pot from frozen. I'm going to be doing two batches of my wild rice soup and I'll link that up in the cards. I uh, posted that recipe a few weeks ago. All right, here's how I layered my veggies for the wild rice soup to go into the freezer. I put my potatoes on the bottom. They're all diced up. And I wanted to make sure they were on the bottom because they need to be completely covered in liquid so that they can freeze well. If you don't cover them in liquid to freeze, you have to blanch them ahead of time. Of course, I didn't want to take the step to do that. So I threw in my potatoes, I threw in my carrots, then my celery and onions on top. Celery and onions, both you don't have to blanch before freezing. So they're the least important to get covered in liquid. Then I put all of my seasonings sprinkled on top. You can go to my original recipe video for all the measurements for all the stuff for this soup. You can find that there. Now all I'm doing is just pouring on, I have four cups of liquid here, which it didn't quite all fit in my other one, but that's fine because it doesn't have to be exact. So I'm just pouring the liquid over the top until it gets as high as it'll go. I just had a little bit left here in the bottom. And then I'm going to just put the other lid on and pop them in the freezer like this. I already have my chicken packaged up, chopped up and packaged into individual packages. So it didn't make sense to defrost it and try to freeze it with everything else. And also um, all the veggies filled up these containers really nicely. So I didn't add the uh, wild rice to the containers. I'll just keep this in the freezer separately as well and just put half of it in when I cook one batch and half of it in when I cook the second batch. I'm trying out this recipe right now. That's what I have sauteing in my instant pot. It is from pressurecookingtoday.com and I've heard really good things about it. I just haven't tried it yet. I'm gonna be making a few adjustments to it. Instead of soy sauce, I'm gonna use uh, coconut aminos because I don't do well with soy. And then also instead of the honey, I'm gonna be using um, Sweet Blend, which is a blend of erythritol and stevia just to keep it lower sugar. And for the cornstarch, I'm gonna use sweet potato flour, which is what I like to use for thickening. Here's the chicken cooking, sauteing here. I'm using chicken thighs instead of chicken breast because that's what I had defrosted that needed to be used. I just added the ketchup and the coconut aminos and the red pepper flakes. And now I have to let it pressure cook on high for three minutes. And then there are a few more steps right at the end. While the chicken, is cooking. I'm going to be getting my rice ready in my second instant pot liner. I didn't feel like pulling out my whole second instant pot since uh, the rice and the chicken both cook really fast. So I'm just going to get my rice all ready in here. And as soon as the chicken is done, then I will just pull out that liner, pop this liner in and start the rice. I'm doing jasmine rice and I just, I keep my little rice cup in my rice storage bucket here, which makes it easy. I just scooped out four cups of the rice and I'm gonna rinse it real quick. I got my rinsed rice in here and a big pinch of salt. And then I'm gonna just fill it up to the four cup line. And now it's all ready for when the chicken is done. And look at that, it's just got one minute left. All right, I'm just adding my last few ingredients here. I'm doing the sweet blend instead of honey. I'm sure it would taste better with honey, but trying to keep the sugar down as much as possible. 
and about two teaspoons of sesame oil. And then I have my thickener here. Oh, I need to turn this on saute mode here. All right, I'm just gonna let that simmer for a minute or two and then it'll be done. All right, I pulled that liner out. I'm just gonna pop in my rice here. And I usually do, like it says in the Instant Pot manual for jasmine rice, I do four minutes on high pressure. The last component to dinner is this chopped salad. I We had this left over from Christmas. Someone brought it over and we didn't end up using it. Um, and let's see, it has bacon and sunflower seeds and a sweet onion dressing, but I wasn't too keen on using the dressing in here. So I just whipped up my own. It's just kind of like a coleslaw, very basic coleslaw dressing. And it, this is almost coleslaw here. So I figured it would be pretty yummy together. So the rice just finished and I'm gonna quick release the pressure here in a second. And then the chicken is done and just having some salad with it. And that is dinner. And it uh, it's not exactly dinner time. It's only 1225. But my husband has kind of a crazy schedule. And um, I don't always know exactly when he's going to come home. So we usually have kind of a late lunch together. And um, so I usually try to get a meal done by around lunchtime or early afternoon. And then that's what I eat for lunch. And then when he comes home, he eats that and so it's ready for him when he gets here. And that is lunch slash dinner for today. Good morning. It is eight o'clock in the morning and we are working on a big batch of waffles. It's right at the end of December and this will be our fourth batch of waffles for the month. Uh, at my beginning of the month uh, cooking, I showed you I made um, a bunch of big packs of waffle mix. And we've used, we've used four so far, or we're about to use the fourth. These girls love waffles, don't you? Yeah. What do you want to have for breakfast? A waffle. Yeah, I know. And we were out, and she was so sad, so we decided to make a giant batch. There's our waffle mix. We got all of our 21 eggs in there. And we're about to put in the applesauce. You ready to put it in, Rue? Yeah. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> What are we doing now, Rue? Making wa uh, cooking, cooking. cooking waffles? Yeah. Yeah, we're waiting for the, the waffle iron to heat up. Uh -huh. And then we're going to cook them. Oh, here come the big girls. See their sleepy-headed faces. Good morning! Oh, bless waffles. you. Waffles. Good morning, Poe! Oh, you're making waffles. Yay. Do you need the pancakes that have chocolate chips in them? Uh, yeah, we could use some of the batter to do that. Yay! Yay! I'll that for instead. You're going to put your oatmeal away? Yes. Oh, I hear Renee. She's awake in there, too. Everybody's waking up. Yeah. Time to start the day, I guess. When it's something. Baby. Baby. Yeah, there is a baby right there. She's so pretty. All right. What do you want for breakfast, Ren? What do you want to eat? Eat. Eat? What do you want to have? Do you want a waffle? Can you say waffle? Waffle, waffle. She says buffu, buffu. Hello, waffle. About to beep. <laughs> the first batch of waffles are done, and there's a whole crowd of vultures ready to snap them up. Are you a vulture? No, she's not. Say she's no, not no. Waffles. Just a baby that likes waffles. Can you say buffu? Yeah, it's a little hot. You're right. Don't shove it all in your mouth at once, girl. That's a big bite. Stinker. All right, tell what you're doing. I'm making chocolate chip pancakes with mommy's waffle batter. Ah. Oh, those ones are done. Yay! So this Bye. batter works for pancakes as well. What are you making now, Autumn? Bacon chocolate chip pancakes. Oh, my goodness. Put bacon bits in there. Mm-hmm. There's all our waffles for the week. The girls are helping me get the kitchen clean and the dishes done before they start their schoolwork. And as soon as it's all cleaned up, I'll get going on a little more freezer cooking. What are you doing, Rue? You're doing your chore, huh? All right, put it on your pile. Look at that beautiful pile of towels. Are you done? Is that the last one? You did great. Give me a high five. All right, go get um, go get two marble credits for doing your chores. Ren, you took my stool. 
Can I put a stool back, please? Renny, what did you do? You took Autumn's stool. Can you put it back? Thank you, Renny. Thank you. Last night I made this giant pot of blueberry topping. I had gotten a really good deal on blueberries quite a long time ago, like a year ago. And I had them, they were all frozen blueberries. And I had them in the freezer. I've had them in the freezer for a long time and we just have not been using them fast enough. So I needed to do something with them, especially since I'm doing so much freezer cooking now. I just need the freezer space and they're just getting old. So I made this giant batch of blueberry topping. We're gonna do um, German pancakes or Dutch baby pancakes, both the same thing, um, on Sunday for our family breakfast together. And I'm gonna make some lemon curd and some blueberry, this blueberry topping on top of that with the Dutch baby pancakes are gonna be amazing. I got some taco meat going back here and my tortillas there that I actually got at the beginning of the month. I was gonna do a big batch of freezer burritos like I did last month, but I never ended up getting to it. I just did the breakfast burritos and just threw those tortillas into the freezer. So um, I am out of the breakfast burritos now and I'm out of the sandwiches that I made. So I'm going to whip up a big batch of the uh, regular bean and ground beef burritos. This is one of the packs of black beans that I made at the beginning of the month and froze. I pulled it out last night and let it defrost. So it's nice having that all ready to go. And of course it was very frugal because I made them from dry instead of buying the canned. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the black beans right in with the meat because it makes it super easy just to have to scoop one thing into the burritos when you're making a whole bunch rather than a scoop of each. I'm just filling up the burritos here with the meat and the bean filling and a little bit of cheese, a little bit of sour cream and rolling them up. I'm putting them on the pan uh, flat and I'll freeze them that way and then transfer them to a Ziploc bag so that they're not all stuck together. I got 12 of the bean and beef burritos made and I had several more tortillas left, a partial pack and a full pack and I didn't want to try to refreeze them so I decided to just cook up a bunch of eggs and I have a little bit of ham that I'm throwing in as well as a few more bacon crumbles that we have left over from a dish on uh, Christmas. So I'm just kind of throwing together everything that I have left in the freezer and fridge at the end of the month here and trying to use it all up. I got nine breakfast burritos made and I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this in the freezer for overnight and then I will put them into Ziploc bags when they're frozen solid. The last thing I'm gonna do today as far as cooking is just cook up a big batch of roasted potatoes. I have so many potatoes I need to use up and everybody loves roasted potatoes and I know they'll get eaten up fast if I do that. I also have a bag of pork chops in the fridge that need to get used and I'm gonna just cook those up real fast and that will probably be dinner tonight. I also have uh, some cauliflower that I blanched and spiced and put oil on and I may pull a bag of that out of the freezer and um, cook that up roasted in the oven and that would probably make a good dinner. Roasted potatoes, roasted cauliflower and pork chops. So that is my cooking day. Well, I showed you today and uh, it was the day before yesterday that I did the um, honey, wait, no, what was it? The chicken, the chicken with the rice, the whatever it was, sesame chicken, sesame chicken. That's what it was. And um, that, yeah, that was day before yesterday. And then all the rest of it was from today. So that's it. Thanks for tagging along in my kitchen today. I hope you guys are all doing fantastic and I'll see you again soon. Bye, guys.